Hi guys. <sighs> it's been a long day. Today I want to talk about what are some foods you can eat that reduce inflammation, help heal the gut, and can boost your immune system. And so some of the healthiest things that we can eat often actually are things we've been told we shouldn't eat. For example, red meat. Particularly grass-fed and pastured or wild game, these are high in omega-3s and low in omega-6s. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Omega-6s are inflammatory. So, <clears throat> wild game is awesome. The omega-3 ratio is great. Same with fish. Fish is very healthy, high in omega-3s, very anti-inflammatory. And these things are bursting at the seams with vitamins and minerals. Why? Because your body is made up of amino acids. And those amino acids come from protein. But there's zero forms of plant protein that actually contain all of the necessary amino acids to regenerate your cells, build muscle, etc. So animal sources of protein are the most healthy sources of protein for you. Now, what those animals eat matters. And so buying an organic chicken is actually less healthy than buying a piece of steak because that chicken ate organic soy and organic corn and organic wheat that made it inflamed and sick and therefore is going to make you inflamed and sick. So getting a steak that ate a grass most of its life is gonna be significantly healthier for you. Other things that are very high in antioxidants are certain fruits, but I'm gonna be more specific. Berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, any kind of berry. They're very low on the plant toxicity scale. They're very high in vitamins and antioxidants and <clears throat> they're actually quite low in sugar and high in fiber. Other things that are great in terms of um, being gut friendly and healthy for you include citrus fruits, um, obviously high in vitamin C, green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale are going to be good for some people but not all people but they are high in folate where your animal proteins are gonna be high in methylcobalamin, B12, which is necessary for all of your organ function. And those two vitamins together, folate, not folic acid, folate. You cannot get folate from folic acid, that's synthetic. So folate, which comes in two forms, methylated folinic acid and uh, methyl, 5-L-methylfolate, sorry, are the only two natural forms of folate. And those are in your green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale, spinach, etc. Um, and methylcobalamin B12 only comes in animal proteins. So things like eggs, fish, meat, game, back to that again, are gonna be very high. And those vitamins together with vitamin B1, B3, which again are gonna come naturally from your food, um, but some people do need more. We'll talk about methylation later, but those things are gonna help your body do a process called methylation. And that's a very lengthy conversation we'll have soon, um, or by itself. <laughs> That'll be a topic unto itself. Um, other things that are great for lowering inflammation are gonna be healthy fats. Those, again, are gonna be rich in omega-3s, low in omega-6s, so avoid corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, soybean oil, um, margarine, any of those trans fats are very high in omega-6s and raise inflammation. Things that are low in omega-6s and prevent inflammation, actually prevent heart disease, are gonna be the antithesis of what you think because canola oil and corn oil and vegetable oil and soybean oil are way more likely to cause a heart attack or a stroke or high blood pressure than um, coconut oil, olive oil, real butter, real lard, and real tallow. Those are my preferred oils to cook with. Um, and depending upon what I'm cooking. So olive oil should be used in cold applications. Avocado oil should be used in cold applications or low heat applications. Coconut oil can be used in hotter applications. Butter, tallow, 
lard, ghee, which is um, the milk solids have been removed from butter, um, are all very good for higher temperature cooking. Um, and we have a little list that I'll post in this group after this video of which oils to use for what purpose. Um, I talked a little bit, I think, about better options for sweeteners yesterday, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, the other thing is when you're choosing vegetables, um, choose colorful vegetables, but most importantly, choose local and in season. Our body is designed to eat with the seasons, so if it has to be shipped from South America in the winter in order for you to get it, then you probably shouldn't be eating it. So shop at farmers markets. Get to know local farmers, local produce um, stands, that kind of thing, and get what's in season, not what has to be shipped. Worst case scenario, if you don't know what to get and there isn't anything fresh, frozen. Because as food travels, it actually loses its nutri uh, nutrient density or nutritional value. So if a cantaloupe was grown in South America and then put on a truck and then put on a plane and then put on another truck and then taken to a distribution center and then taken to your grocery store and then put out, it's going to have a hell of a lot less nutrients than if you just got the frozen vegetables. So in the winter, when things are not as readily available, don't hesitate to get frozen, okay? If you live somewhere where you can grow things, that's ideal. And if you can can your own fruits and vegetables and preserve your own fruits and vegetables or freeze your own fruits and vegetables, that's optimal too. But I know that not everybody can do that. Um, keep meals this simple. This is the guideline that all of my clients use. Every single time you eat, whether it is a meal or a snack, always start with the protein source. Then add a vegetable and a healthy fat every single time you eat. That means don't just grab a peach or a nectarine or a banana and eat it by itself. Pair that fruit, if you're going to eat it, with a healthy fat and a healthy protein. So one of my favorite snacks is um, beef jerky without um, uh, soy. So you want to look for a soy-free, gluten-free beef jerky because soy sauce typically has gluten in it. Um, great ones include Epic, uh, the new Primal, Chomps. Uh, there's lots of great companies out there and they're very easy to find anymore. They're not very difficult to find in local stores like they used to be. Um, also, when you're looking at meats, like lunch meat and stuff, look for nitrate-free or uncured, uncured bacon. Uh, this means that they're not adding uh, outside sources of sugar to it, and nitrate-free means that they're not using synthetic nitrates. Now, there will be some naturally occurring nitrates in um, some types of meats, like aged meats, like salami and pepperoni and that kind of stuff, but you can look for nitrate-free and uncured those are labels to look for when you're looking at um, meats and snacks and preserved meats and that kind of stuff. Canned tuna is a great snack to have around. Canned sardines are great. You want them in olive oil. Um, don't be afraid of good fats. So I am going to go ahead and post that list of good fats versus bad fats, when to use them, um, and what type of applications they're best for probably either later tonight or first thing in the morning. And then tomorrow, I'm not quite sure what I want to talk about yet. Um, you guys had a lot of great questions. I'm going through the list and trying to make sure that I touch on each of the subjects that are relevant to you guys, but I'd like to throw something fun in the mix. So maybe tomorrow we'll do a little recipe, a demo. Okay. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful night. Bye.